time to visit with one of our favorite people. Kim Bear is going to be joining us right now. And of course, uh, people going through uh, the pandemic right now, people having to live through a bunch of different things. And there's some things that you really need to have in place uh, just for your own sake and for your own peace of mind, as well as your families. Yeah, some paperwork, mm -hmm. uh, Kim, that you recommend that we have lined up and ready to go, especially during the pandemic. What are we talking about today? Yeah, so um, I'll tell you, my office, the Bear Law Office, we have been filling these out. It's almost like, you know, like they're hotcakes or something. So uh, um, what the what I wanted to talk about today was powers of attorney. And uh, it's something that's really important right now when, um, you know, when you're not sure what's going to happen with regard to your health, with regard to, uh, you know, if you end up in the hospital. And so I thought I'd just kind of walk everybody through what they are and, you um, and clarify a few points because I think there's some misconceptions about them as well. And this is something that you really, it's, it's very valid and I'm glad you're talking about this now because unfortunately the numbers that we're seeing, you could get sick and have things escalate in a hurry. And you yeah. want to make sure that you're ahead of this just in case something might happen. Yeah, yeah. And we actually, um, we've been filling these out for a lot of elderly people, as you might imagine, but also, um, you know, I just was talking to uh, a client yesterday who told me about, you know, somebody who was 33 who went from, you know, and was healthy uh, and unfortunately passed within about, you know, 10 days. I mean, so as we know, I mean, this this uh, coronavirus doesn't really care who you are, how old you are, just doesn't care. So, um, so what would be nice to have in place for everybody, and these things are pretty cheap. So, um, and if you've got an attorney, your attorney can help you out with these. Um, so first of all, I thought we'd talk about an, a power of attorney for medical decisions. Um, and that comes into play um, if for some reason you, um, you fill it out, if you cannot make your own medical decisions, you're on a ventilator, you're in a coma, you've been hit. And maybe it's not Maybe it's not COVID. Maybe you've been hit by a car. Maybe you're undergoing um, surgery and uh, you know, uh, you're gonna be out of it for a few days. And so what the power of attorney for medical decisions does is it allows you to choose who you would like to make those decisions. And why is it important to have something like this in place and what's something maybe we don't realize when it comes to having these power of attorney paperwork? Right. So, so let's say um, if you are uh, divorced and um, and you've got you know three children, uh, what and maybe one of your children is really the responsible one, and the other two are very emotional. Uh, if if you don't have a power of attorney, um, it's going to put your doctors in a position of having to ask all of your children to agree on treatment, to agree on making decisions. Um, if you uh, you know if you um, uh, are married. Maybe you, maybe your spouse isn't somebody that you want making those decisions because it's going to be too tough for them. So what's nice about it is you're able to pick your first choice, your second choice, and your third choice um, as to who is it that you want making these important decisions for you. All right, you you answered the the next question I was going to ask, but maybe you, you said some older people are uh, having a power of attorney in, initiated as well. But maybe your spouse, you don't want your spouse having to make that decision, or maybe your spouse is to the point where they might not be able to make that decision. That you'd be able to bypass that too and have someone else of rational mind that would be able to do that. Right, and I think now is an important time. You know, you need to sit down if you're married and have these discussions with your spouse because it's going to be very hard for your spouse to say, to make some hard decisions because they love you. And obviously, you know, they may not want, if it's time to let go or time to make um, some dramatic decisions, they may not be capable of doing that. I mean, I think I've talked before on the show, my husband does not do well with hospitals. And we just recently, last year, we went through, unfortunately, a lot of situations in his family where we were losing people and in the hospital a lot. And it was hard for him to even go to the hospital. And so that that was a uh, light bulb to me that he really is not the person that should be my power of attorney. And he's fine with that. Um, so, you know, uh, my daughter will be making those decisions for me. So how is this the same or different uh, to a will? Like if I've laid it out in my will saying that if I'm in this certain state, I want this to happen. Is this the same different? Do I need to add this to a will to make sure that certain protocols are put in place? 
Right. So a will would not govern this, but a living will would, Jackie. And so if you, well, it would govern what would happen, but not who's making the decisions. So typically what we do, if people come into our office, we talk to them about a power of attorney for medical decisions, a power of attorney for um, financial decisions, and a living will. And the living will um, sets forth a number of um, situations. So for instance, it will say, if I'm in a coma and they say that um, I might come out of it, this is what I want to happen. If I'm in a coma and there's no chance that I'm ever going to regain my quality of life, this is what I want to happen. Um, if I, you know, if I'm, you know, have no brain activity, this is what I want to happen. So it has, it's a checklist of things where you actually, you know, kind of stop and think. And it also has a, I don't know. So if you can't make that decision now, you know, you can say, I don't know. But for the most part, it is the document that you're filling out that's going to give your power of attorney your wishes and it's binding i mean that way you know for sure that um your your family member and your power of attorney are going to follow your wishes so let's go back to uh financial because you mentioned obviously power of attorney when it comes to medical but also financial what happens if you don't have these in place like you mentioned the doctor would ask the family what to do in the in case of medical reasons but let's say something does happen where did where, what what happens? I don't have any paperwork to to tell anybody what to do. What naturally would happen? Right. So it's very difficult with fi regard to financial situations because if you're the only one on your bank account, um, then uh, somebody's going to have to probably go open up a conservatorship. So that's going to be expensive. That's a court action, and that's asking the court to appoint someone to manage your finances. And so that's why, again, a power of attorney for financial decisions is so helpful because um, the person can take take that down to the bank with the letter from the doctor or if a court has already declared you incompetent with the court ordered so they can take it to the bank and say here my mom my dad my sister my brother whatever the case may be um uh no longer is making these can make these decisions i need access so i can write rent checks or mortgage checks or pay bills or um so so and then one of the things i wanted to point out about the power of attorney for financial decisions is a lot of people think well i don't want to give my child or my brother or sister access to my bank account right now. What we put in the power of attorney is that it only becomes effective when a uh, doctor says that you're incompetent, in other words, you're in a coma or you're on a ventilator and you can't make these decisions or a court makes, it makes that determination. So it's a document you have already, um, but it doesn't give anybody any access or control over your finances until this horrible situation arises. Right. So that, I mean, that would ease a lot of minds if they didn't know that because they don't want your brother getting access to your accounts. Exactly. Exactly. I just had somebody in my office a few weeks ago that initially said, yeah, they wanted their daughter to have access to their accounts now. And so I walked them through and said, OK, she can take this down to the bank right now. Are you fine with that? No, maybe I'm not. All right. Well, then we'll change it. So, you know, we try real hard when people come into the office and we, we pretty much when I say come into the office, we talk to you either over Zoom or with a conference call, figure out what it is that you need. And then we come out with masks and we'll meet you out at your car. We ask you to, to wear a mask and we get everything notarized and signed and then, and then you're on your way. So we, we do it in a very safe, safe atmosphere. Now, Kim, you also mentioned that this is something that is should be at everyone's top of mind just to make sure they're prepared for whatever might happen in our future. You know, despite a pandemic or mm -hmm. not, right. life happens and you want to be prepared for it. But you also said these can be uh, rather inexpensive, which also can maybe entice people that they need to get this done now. What kind of money are we talking to get everything lined up and ready to go? Right. So our office charges $100 per power of attorney. We also give a discount. So if you're going to get two powers of attorney, we usually give a discount. Or if you're going to get two powers of attorney and a living will, we'll give a discount. And so you'll want it. That's what we charge. And uh, so you'll want to talk to you. If you already have an attorney, talk to your attorney about what the cost is. But it's really pretty minimal to have them in place. And then you just don't have to worry about it. Um, and also, it's I think it's helpful for um, children to know this is who mom wants to make the decisions or this is who dad picked um, or this is the backup person so that way you know kids aren't fighting later so yeah, yeah. It, it's a, a lot better uh, peace of mind when you do that for the entire family i was gonna say just by having certain right. paperwork in place kim great information this morning again remind everybody you are willing to meet uh in the safest ways possible how everyone feels comfortable how can they get in touch with you 
Yeah, so just give us a call, 279-2000. We're more than happy to talk to you on the phone and, and talk about what you need. There's no charge for that, that phone call, and then we figure it out from there. So we're more than happy to help. All right, Kim Bear, thank you so very much, Bear Law Office. You stay safe, buddy. We'll see you next time. Okay, all right. See you later. Bye, thank guys. You.